Can you tell me what production connects Jerry Anderson, mm-hmm. Derek Meddings, mm-hmm. Gabrielle Drake, right. Alexis Canna, and right. Francis Matthews? Okay, well, I thought we were heading down the sort of UFO route. Well, obviously. But Francis Matthews? Did he audition for it or provide a voice for it? No. No? Don't know. Go on. So we're going just prior to UFO, chronologically. Anyway, it's a 1969 movie that they were all involved with named Crossplot. Crossplot? So we've spoken before about how Stanley Kubrick approached Dad to have Century 21 produce the effects for 2001 A Space Odyssey, but he turned them down, saying that the company only produced effects for their own productions. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then, as we know, Brian Johnson went off and did it by himself and they fell out and then they got back together again later on. But uh, all that and more later on. Um, Yeah. Once the movie was released and it was a smash hit, he rather regretted having done that, obviously. And so when producer Robert S. Baker came to him asking if they would produce a short visual effects sequence for the movie Crossplot, Dad obviously said yes, thinking, well, I don't Uh want to miss out again. (laughs) <laughs> now, yeah. Robert S. Baker might be a name fans of British cult TV will recognise as the producer of such ITC shows as Gideon's Way, The Saint, The Persuaders, mm. and mm. The Return of the Saint. Okay. The saintly persuadery connection is strong with Crossplot because the film starred Roger Moore. Roger Moore. Nice. This was, uh, let's hope there's a Terry Wogan mention too later on. This was a post-Saint but pre-Persuaders and pre-Bond Roger Moore. Okay. And essentially the film feels almost like a pitch for the idea of Roger Moore as a potential James Bond. Ah, Although produced with a much smaller budget. Uh, Basically, if you've ever seen an episode of The Saint, then you've pretty much seen Crossplot. The sequence that Century 21 effects were hired to produce involved a model of a helicopter that had been chasing Roger Moore's character through the woods, colliding with the cables from a pair of electrical pylons and exploding. Uh, The sequence was filmed at the Century 21 Slough Studios in autumn 1968 during the production of The Secret Service. But unfortunately, it didn't go too well. Legend has it that one of the effects technicians was injured by the explosion of the model model helicopter, which, which, being a Derek Meddings explosion, was obviously... Quite a bit bigger than it yes. really needed to be. Yeah, yeah. Now, we say legend has it because some sources say he was injured. Others say he was nearly injured. So ah. the truth might be somewhere in between. Whatever, whatever well, the truth between nearly and was is. Yes, if you're nearly slightly injured. Slightly injured? You're not injured, are you? Mm, yeah, okay, well. It's like being nearly pregnant. We don't. <laughs> We don't. Okay, maybe the injury is binary, but we don't know the degree to which <laughs> this person was nearly I or actually understand. injured. Right, yes. If you watch the film, you won't spot a credit for Derek or for Dad or even Century 21. Um, and we're not really sure why that is. Possibly because their contribution basically amounts to less than 10 seconds of the footage in the final film. Or maybe mm-hmm. there was some legal reason, some contractual yeah. reason, some financial that reason. Matter. Yeah. But who yeah. knows? But that's a very rare example of Dad producing footage for someone else's production. Obviously, AP Films and Century 21 were producing adverts for various well-known breakfast cereals and ice lollies at the time, uh, using the supermarination characters, and that's one thing. But for Dad to create material for someone else's film but have no actual creative input into the film itself is very, very unusual. Yeah. If he was hoping that Crossblot was going to be the next 2001 A Space Odyssey, then unfortunately he was way out of luck. But you'll be glad to hear that Crossblot is out there on DVD and YouTube for those who fancy a look. Okay. Interesting. Um, you may be able to spot some pictures of the shoot, possibly an Alan Shubrick Century 21 FX Unseen Untold book, if you've got a copy of that. Oh, right. right. Uh, so do pop along and have a look there. Now, there's also, Dad and his team did an effects sequence for the theatre tour of Return to the Forbidden Planet. Oh, did they? Yes, that's the only other thing, uh, example I can immediately think of that wasn't an advert. Um, oh, yeah, okay. they did some you know on-screen I spaceship no backgrounds and, uh, and other alien worlds or whatever it was. Um, uh, I remember them talking about it a lot when I was a kid, but I never saw yeah. it. So, no. Have you seen Crossplot? Can you see Derek's work uh, in action? And also, did you ever go and see Return to the Forbidden Planet? I'd love to know. Mm. Drop us a line. Mm. Podcast at jerryanderson.com. Yes. 
that's it. Ooh, yeah, I, I remember Return for the, to the Forbidden Planet d- sort of doing the rounds, but I never got to see it, and I had no idea there was a Jerry Anderson connection. Yeah, there you go. See, yeah. you learn something new every day in yeah. Fat Facts, don't you? Or every that's week, right. anyway. I'm beginning to like it now. No, you, you're a, you're a fib. Oh, I mean, I'm, you know, that's going a bit far, perhaps. Yeah, it's a fib yeah, fact, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, right. Fantastic little bit of cross-plot nonsense there. Uh, let us know, again, if you've seen that, or return to the Moon Planet podcast, jerryanson.com. But that is the end of this week's... Cross-plot cross fact! fact.